everyone, and welcome back to another book club. I am the rat, and this is the rat's nest. I'm joined as always by Trevor. Say hi, Trevor. Hi, Trevor. That's so true. Trevor of the famous Sex Sex Fruit video. My, which, yes. by the way, Trevor, I don't think I told you, that surpassed 400 views. <laughs> Wow, it's my, wow. That's, that's my most viewed video truly now. My, truly, truly in my best work. I, it, it sure is, isn't it? We are here today with a manga that is dear and, and steer to Trevor's heart. Because actually, five years ago, Trevor had breast cancer. And as that's, he was recovering so from this, uh, Hirohiko Araki wrote to him a letter and said, what's your favorite genre of, of manga, little boy? And Trevor wrote back and said, I don't speak Japanese, I don't know what you're saying. And Iraqi said, I've got you. And he wrote Steel Ball Run in America for Trevor. So we're here today with JoJo's Part 7, Steel Ball Run. We have read the first 24 chapters. Well, I've read it all, but I, I'm, I'm rereading it. And Trevor is reading it for the first time. So we have read the first 24 chapters of, of Steel Ball Run. So before we get into the specifics, Trevor, right? Well, yeah. o overall kind of thoughts so far. Well, what, what, what are you feeling? What are you feeling so far? Yeah, so, so far, I mean, the, the one thing that I noticed, um, uh, like, like, really heavily, right, is that it's like, it's like, um, y you know, I, at first I was like, oh, yeah, it's kind of cool how, like, you know, uh, 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 Gyro is, like, more of a main character, and then it, like, in, um, one of the uh, one of the chapters where it talks about his backstory, it just straight up says, yeah, our protagonist, Gyro Zapelli, and I was <laughs> yeah. like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> Yeah, so this this technically isn't a Joseph's part by that standard because you know he's not the main character. Uh, it, it's kind of a, a situation that um, I would compare it to, kind of like part five. We're like, sure, Giorno's the protagonist, right? But like Giorno and Bucciarati really kind of share that role. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. It, it, it's part seven is very similar with uh, Johnny and and Gyro. It, it's very similar with that, and I really like that because I think that it you know adds to the character. I mean, Bucciarati is one of my favorite JoJo's characters. I, I loved him. Yeah, in part I mean, five. I agree, I agree with that. I agree. So with that. I, I, I I really enjoy the their dynamic that we'll, that, that we've seen and that, and that you will see. But yeah, no. So I I, I think I told you, uh, and for anyone who's watching that doesn't know, all three people is originally whenever part seven was uh, published it wasn't published as jojo's part seven it was published just as steel ball run and gyro zapelli was actually the first character shown from it where every other part had been the main jojo gyro was the first character shown and obviously we don't even see johnny until chapter is it chapter i think we like, see him in chapter two but then he's like introduced chapter three no, yeah, I, 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 I don't remember seeing in chapter two. I think it was chapter three. So wait, when, when, uh, when Silva One was was first published, was chapter one just like not there? Did like you not have like the thing starting with, um, uh, with, um, uh, what's his name? Sandman. Uh, the, yeah, Sandman. Oh, was you he, did. Was he like not there? Okay, it started. It's st it, so it did start like that. Yeah, it's it's okay. kind of a thing where like people weren't certain if this was like a reboot of sorts, and like I guess it still kind of is. But like, like for example, like, like something that some people will do. Like, there's one example right now, where there was a series called Fairy Tale that ran and ended, and then the author wrote a series called Eden Zero that like reuses a lot of the name. Kind of, kind of similar to How Steel Ball Run has like you know Johnny Joester is like Jonathan and Gyro Zapelli who's like Caesar and Will, right? So like, it's not unheard of to do that. It wasn't until actually, so the first 24 chapters, and this is why it was a good stopping point, uh, were published in the Weekly Shonen Jump magazine. And like, so like they were published weekly, right? And they were published as Steel Ball Run. After this, they switched to monthly jump, which means they were monthly chapters. So one, the chapters will get longer after this. Uh, and two, they could, because like Iraqi had more time to write them uh, other than just what we had a month. And um, also like, you know, in my opinion, the art gets better. It's also what helped Steel Ball Run take a while because Steel Ball Run took seven or eight years to publish. As yeah, opposed to yeah. like the other parts taking like a max four. And so whenever it started publishing in Monthly Jump, it was rebranded to JoJo's Part 7 Steel Ball Run. And, and, you know, at this point where we are in the story, it's like, yeah, it, it, it's JoJo's, right? There, there's no, you got, you got funny, funny stands, you got funny uh, Joe stars, you got funny Zapellis. You even have, exactly. uh, you, you even have funny uh, Metallica in there once or twice. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, you've you got you've got wannabe Metallica. You also have uh, wannabe Hermit Purple in, in Mountain Tim. That's so true. 
And, yeah, uh, so and you've gotten uh, wannabe um, uh, killer, killer queen. queen. Yeah, killer queen. I almost said deadly queen. That's so true. Deadly queen. Killer so we're, queen. We're watching through. We're watching through the dub. <laughs> we are. And, and okay. so the the dub names might slip out. <laughs> Well, I, I'm more familiar with the... Uh, so so that's your advantage with reading this, Trevor, is you're going to get exposed to the actual names. So whenever yeah, Part 7, yeah. the anime comes out and we watch the dub, and and Mr. Mr. Funny Man says, filthy acts at a reasonable price, you'll understand. Dude, I can't, <laughs> I can't wait to see Farp. I can't wait. All right, so let's let's talk about the, the beginning a little bit, right? Yes. So, so we, started, you have... we started with uh, with Sandman, right? We just, yes, uh... a little intro with Sandman. Yep. Um, yeah, and like we we get to see his his Sandman stand like almost instantly, right? It's like yeah. on on like a super early page. Yeah, um, we get to see its arm, and people people always remember Hey Ya is the first stand shown in Steel Ball Run. Yeah, technically it's Sandman's. Yeah, on on page twelve because I'm looking it up right now. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I mean, what what do you think about this little intro with Sandman? Um, I wasn't expecting it because you know he's not yeah. a he's not a, a a you know a, a returning JoJo character, and I was expecting a returning JoJo character, and we we see him for like a, a solid, um, like four, 14 pages, fifteen yeah, pages. It's, it's a solid intro with him. I was I remember my first time reading this. I was I would like I was like I was like who is this guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was, like, I was like why I was are we like, starting oh. off here? And and rereading it, I like the intro. I do like it. Yeah. Um, it just, you know, it, it definitely like reading it, knowing the context of Iraqi was intentionally being like, is this Jojo or not? It makes a lot of sense. And I, I do like the way that it's initially set up where you get to meet uh, some of the, the, the race participants before you meet Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. We get introduced to Sandman. And then do we see Gyro before Poco Loco? I can't remember. Uh, all- yes. You see Gyro on page um Technically thirty nine, yeah. And so, and then, yeah, Poco Loco is—he's not in chapter one; he's in chapter two. It also introduces you to the Steel Ball Run race, not like properly. Like later in the chapter, you get introduced by Steven Steel to the Steel Ball Run race, but it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's the idea of like, okay, you see Sandman. It also it establishes the setting because it's very different from Part Six, which uh, what you Trevor just started watching Part Six tonight. Um, the, the uh, no, it's not. It's like it's like the exact same place. So They're true. both in America. That's so true. It's a direct sequel, obviously. Yeah. So so it establishes the uh, the time period because imagine being in Florida in 2011 and then not being in Florida. <laughs> or in 2011. That's so true. Yeah, I think I, I think I think it's a super solid opening. Uh, definitely. Yeah. I, mean, I, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what else a Rocky would write for the opening. And there's a, a couple other things. But then we get introduced to Gyro Zapelli Kinda and the Steel Ball Run Race. So it's a race across the continent, prize of fifty million dollars, adjusted for inflation. It's much modern day money as of two thousand and four. As of two thousand, wow. Yeah, that was when. The, That's that was like when wait, I still I still have uh, I still have my uh, my my inflation calculator that I pulled up earlier yeah. for something completely different. Yeah, so it's I can so I can true. see how much how much that is in today's money. In today's money, um, let's see. How much is Hero right. Zapelli winning? Yeah. 50 zero, 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 zero. In 2004 to, to uh, 2023. That's the year, right? Yeah. That's as far so. as it'll let me go, so it better be the year. <laughs> That's so true. Oh, I said please enter values less than ten thousand. Okay. Uh, I'm going that's to I'm gonna do I'm gonna do ten thousand and then I'm gonna multiply yeah, we're, by we're five. gonna calculate it. Okay. Okay. Ten thousand in in uh, oh, two thousand. I why did it change back to two thousand? <laughs> Calculate. Troll. Okay. Ten thousand is sixteen thousand, and so it would be uh uh like eighty thousand, give or take. Eight, not a thousand. Eighty thousand. Not thousand. That's million, so million, true. Million, That's million, so million, true. Million. That's so true. Million. Million. <laughs> Like Dude, the dollars. U.S. dollar is so strong nowadays. Am I right? <laughs> eighty thousand. That's so true. So here is the Pelly is going to get eighty thousand dollars for winning this race. It's set yeah, up. Yeah. You got some sponsors. You got the Speedwagon Oil Corporation. That's pretty cool. You have some star racers like Ermed Avdal and a certain Diego Brando. Yeah, yeah. Man. As well as um, 
uh, uh, who else did we have? There, there was, was other. There was another name. There was return, another. Right? Oh, was it? Who was it? Wait, I can. Uh, let, me, let me. There was the uh, the guys in the car. I can't remember who their names. The guys in the cars like had to drop out immediately because they ran out of gas. <laughs> um, no, cars is in part two. That's so true. I'm so sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, gotta skip through all of uh, 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 Johnny's backstory. I don't care about that guy. You're cringe. This story is about this story is about Gyro. That's so true. This is a story about me learning to walk again. No, it's not cripple. You <laughs> can't get back in the chair. <laughs> but yeah, so while you're looking, so I mean, th there's a couple other participants. So like the you know you have Sandman's participating, Poco Loco's participating. You get to see Gyro sign up. And he, what you call it, you know, he throws his little steel ball. Oh, I think it, I think it was it. Mountain Tim. I think it was. Oh, Mountain it was. Tim was the other it was. One. Yeah, yeah. It was Mountain Tim. Funny man, I like him. Yeah, I like Mountain Tim. Yeah, the, I mean, the entire player. like sign up process where we get introduced to to Gyro, we get to see him little dual thing, and the the whole mystery of what are the steel balls, and then we get to see Johnny see this, and he's like, he's like, what's going on here? And he's like, what's this mystery? And he touches it. And his legs work for a split second. And he's able, he's yeah. able, he's able to stand up for a split second. And so the whole mystery of, of what what is this power, right? And initially, you think it's a stand, right? I thought it was. Everyone thinks it's a stand. It's really yeah, really I funny. Mean, I, I, but fun, I, funny I JoJo's, yeah. you're like, you're like, it's a stand. And then it's not. It's the spin, which we learn later. I mean, yeah. I mean, I I remember I was I was reading the uh, I was like uh, chapter two in the. Um, in the in a in a Discord call with Brandon, right? Yeah. Uh, and um, like in the uh, like the the guy who tries to take his uh, gyro is like ten bucks. Um, touches the steel ball and just like instantly like crumbles. And I was like, that's gotta be a stand, right? Yeah. And Brandon was like, oh, I don't know. That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know that that that's one of the weird things I think with part seven. And one of the one of the adjustments for me that I had to do while I was reading it the first time was like just getting okay, like, like this is its own thing, like this is new, like we haven't seen it before. It's you know, it, it's Hamon, right? It's it's the other power system of this universe. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And what, one of the that, things that won't that, be uh, that won't be in any any part besides part seven. That's so true. It'll it, it never shows up again ever whatsoever. Exactly. Why never, would it ever show? Never up again? shows up again whatsoever because there's no parts past part seven, dude. Exactly. <laughs> there's no, there's no like more JoJo's. I yeah, mean, this so, isn't even JoJo's that's, right now, it's so not, far. dude. It's not. It's Steel Ball Run. That's crazy. Exactly. <laughs> got Hero Zappelli as the main character. Exactly. Yeah. So I Hero Zappelli. I mean, well, obviously we're, we'll have more to, to say about the the spin uh, later as we read more. But that, that was one of the adjustments, was realizing, okay, like, this is its own power. This isn't a stand. And so, I mean, I think the whole little intro, then you get Johnny's intro where you see that he's a cripple because he was an idiot. Yeah, yeah, that was based. He, he got what he deserves. I, I stand by that. He deserved to yeah, be, be shot fair. in the spinal cord. So, and, th and that's also interesting because now, with having seen part one, you get to see just how different Johnny and Jonathan are. Like they're the they're the equivalents if you want to use that word for each other, but Jonathan like was like this noble guy who like always tried to be a gentleman and all that. And Johnny's just paying the police to arrest a person to impress the uh, the, the the woman of the hour that he's with. Yeah, he, but like honestly, I think I think um, you know. I don't I don't think like that was naturally part of his character. Like he. He went against like what his conscience told him to do in that scenario. At least that's 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 how I read it. Yeah, I mean, what you call it, but it's still the fact that like he did it, you know. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, like um, uh, Jonathan definitely wouldn't have done that. Uh huh. Like he would have been, he would have been like, "No way, lady, you um, uh, are uh, not I'll good enough for, for your me." Ticket, and but just, we aren't skipping just... the line in the cinema. Yeah. Would have been yeah. Like. You compare that. You compare that to uh, to what somebody like uh, Jotaro would say, and he would just say "good grief" and then punch her in the face. That's he would, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 I I think that that was an interesting, especially showing it so early. I think was good to go ahead and get that contrast. Yeah. Because yeah. you see Johnny Joestar, and you're like, oh, he's, you know, it's going to be Jonathan again, and it's very much so not Jonathan again. 
And yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I think that that's a good good foundation for his character to build upon. Where, yeah, he, he was an idiot, right? He made a lot of bad choices. He maybe wasn't the best person. And then he paid for that, right? He got what he deserved. <laughs> Lol, have fun walking again, idiot. And then learning, you know, seeing that, okay, now we understand why he can't walk. Now we're understanding that, like, you know, he's going on this journey to learn to walk again, right? That I, I, I think I think that it was a good setup there. I think that it was a good setup there. And then after that, I'm trying to remember, we have Johnny tries to get on the horse, right? He tries to ride Slow Dancer is the name of his horse. I don't know if it's said yet. It's probably on the, the big race sheet, right? Yeah, uh, I, I know for a fact it's on the big race sheet. Yeah, so you have Slow Dancer. Johnny's trying to to master her because he, he's, you know, former former horse jockey, right? But you can't walk, and that's kind of a problem. Um, but right before the race starts, he, like... <laughs> Slow Dancer drags him to the line. <laughs> He's like all bloodied. He has yeah, like a piece of yeah. wood in his leg. You know, as you do. As you do, right? And then he's able to for a second with the help of Gyro, right? He's like, you have he's like, you have to spin. He uses Johnny for a split second, uses the spin, and is able to get up on Slow Dancer. And so that's that's your first kind of semblance of, okay, maybe this isn't a stand, right? Because then, then you're in there and you're like, okay, well, Johnny can use it too. So then why were they both able to use it? Unless it's like a, a, a stand shared with multiple people. That'd be crazy to have a stand shared with multiple people, wouldn't it? Yeah, like that would like probably never exist or anything like that. That would never exist. Uh, but then you have the race starting and then yada, yada. What did you think of this entire race segment, Trevor? I, uh, I thought the race segment was really cool. It went on for like a really long time. Yeah. No, it's a so fun fact. So yeah. back uh, at the end, it was like uh, sophomore. No, it wasn't sophomore year. I'm I'm stupid. Senior year of high school, um, I read Stone Ocean. That's when I read it for the first time. And okay. then after that, I started Part Seven. And I got to about this point, <laughs> and then I guess I was just tired of reading JoJo's. I dropped Part Seven initially. I was like, I'll get back to it later. And so I, I got to Hey Ya. I, I got to about Hey Ya. Um, I don't even think I was at Hey Ya yet. And I was like, I'm just, I'm tired. Because um, I, you know, I read all of Stone Ocean. I was like, I was like, I was like, I need a break. I need to do something else. Okay, I okay, did Brian, not. Just to, just to clarify, uh, yeah. when you say Hey Ya, are you talking about the stand or the horse? Because they share a name. Uh, the stand. Okay, okay, not the horse. Are you sure? If there is ever a person that says Hey Ya and means the horse. I'm 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 worried for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I just really love Hey Ya as a character, you know. That's so true. Horse. That's so true. I, from now on, we need to refer to Hey Ya as the horse. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. Say, yeah, Poco Loco Stan, whatever whatever his name is. That's it so is, true. It is horse. Hey Ya. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. So originally, yeah, I dropped it, and then I didn't reread. Uh, Part seven until uh, December, or I think it was November uh, twenty-one. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna sit down and read part seven and eight. And I went, I sat down, and I read part seven and eight because it was after part eight ended, and we thought part nine was gonna start soon, and then part nine didn't start soon. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna catch up so I can read part nine with Kyle because that sounds like fun. Yeah. So this is about where I got. So I like, I like, I mean, what you call it? It it is a, you know, originally whenever I read it. I didn't like how long it went without stands, but upon the reread, I really, I, I do quite like it. Yeah, I mean, I think it was a, it was a, it was a reasonable choice to go that that long before introducing, um, like like fully introducing a stand, and that first fully introduced stand being, um, hey, uh, uh, the stand, not the horse. Yeah, where it's kind of you know like, you know like it's kind of a mystery like what does hey uh, do? It's not really a proper stand battle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the first like actual stand battle isn't until the uh, the second stretch. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's, I... it's not even actually a stand battle because uh, the uh, what's his name, uh, Miss Robinson doesn't doesn't have a stand. He doesn't. That's true. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I can definitely appreciate it. So this is this little horse segment here is why a lot of people think Steel Run is going to be hard to animate because of all the horses. 
Nah, it'll be fine. They only have to do like a little bit of work and then it's like everything's like done with computers anyway. Yeah, that's true. I honestly I don't think it'll be an issue, but if you hear people say Steelball Run will be hard to animate, that's the reason why. They're they're talking I mean about the horses throughout the entire part, but like specifically here where you have like a ton of them. So also in the race we get to see Diego Brando for the first time. What do you what do you think of funny man Diego, Trevor? Uh, he's he's pretty cool. He's um, uh, uh, really smart. He's in uh, he's in drafting, uh, not drafting as in like um, yeah. like yeah. like drafting. He's being conscripting drafted. people for the military. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not so not true. like that. Not like that. Like uh, like air drafts, like air currents. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in that. It's like pretty smart. Pretty smart. And and then he's like um, paying enough attention and to like even surprise um, uh, Gyro. With like his knowledge of like how horses work, and it's, and then the gyro does the really f weird thing with this with the with the spin and makes his uh his horse like veer off to the right, and uh -huh. and he's like, whoa, you have a you have an inconsistency there, bud, um, and and yeah, it's it's I mean I don't know how Dio is able to uh, to spot that, but yeah, you know, just, he was so you know whatever. he's smart. I mean he's a genius jockey. He's been he's been. But that's a, a stand. That's a stand. The world you can see. Uh, you can, you can, you can. Uh, the world see see really good. <laughs> the, the world star platinum star I. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. That's, That's so, so true. true. That is so true. Oh my gosh. But yeah. No, I, I I really do quite like this beginning section. It's it's a it's a fun little section. You get hey y'all. So we talked about this a little bit, Trevor. You believe yeah. that hey y'all gives luck. Yeah, personally, I think hey y'all is the uh, the bestower upon luck of of the bestower of luck. That, that's a that's a big conversation. If you, you you gotta at least mention your stance on it with Hey Ya. Uh, yeah, you yeah. I, I personally I think Hey Ya is just a motivator and Poco Loco just has the luck. But what you call it? That's it, it's, it's it's never explained, so we just don't know. But yeah, I, I, you I know I like it. It's the kind of you know I like I like the mystery there. Yeah. Well, um, it's like one of the one of the um. The like against the uh, the the Poco Loco. I mean, Hey Ya giving luck was that like you don't see um, Hey Ya until like into the race, and he had been lucky like before that, right? That was like one of the, one of the points. Yeah. yeah. Where just a as we'll see later, I can explain more in depth as to why I believe that. Yeah. I, I can't exactly explain it right now. Um, but, yeah. but well, it, I mean, uh, th there's there's more reasons later why I, why I think that. Yeah. Well, currently, as from from what I have seen so far, I mean, I think I think um, you know, Hey Ya does in fact give the luck, and yeah. um, on top of that, I mean, like, uh, uh him having luck, uh, Poco Loco having luck before he, you know, was seen with Hey Ya. Uh, that can be like attributed to um you know like other stands um you know have uh like like shown themselves in in like minor ways before like coming out in their uh -huh. full form like i mean looking at, at stone ocean which we watched the like first like five or six episodes of you know uh within the last hour um two hours um uh uh, like, uh, like you know, you know. Um, spoilers, by the way. Um, Jolene got the little little thread. Yeah, spoilers for Stone Ocean. Finger. <laughs> yeah, spoilers for Stone Ocean. Uh, Jolene's got the little thread coming from her finger at first, and then like you don't actually see, like the actual embodiment of 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 Stone Ocean until, you know, a little bit later. Yeah. Like two episodes in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah no, and definitely. Then, and so. You know, like he could, he could have like that the aspect of like the extra luck yeah, before the extra luck AI is like there. You know, I ju actually I just thought of another another thing, and we we, we can discuss it more. Uh, what do you call it later? When, once we know, once you know more about stands, I I just I just thought of another thing that I think I I almost might be on your side now because I, I was just thinking about it. I almost might be on your side now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but well, well that, yeah. that that's a that's a discussion for uh, for a later time, whatever, whenever. Yeah, you for know, for uh, a later, yeah, later edition of, of book club when uh, when we actually know a little bit more about Poco Loco. I mean, not yeah, Poco Loco and Hey Ya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah I, I that I, horse I, is just so he's, mysterious. He's, he's such a mysterious <laughs> horse, dude. That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> How was he able to skate on that dead cow like that? That's, he must be so <laughs> lucky. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh, but yeah. So then Hero Sapelli comes in, and you get to see the steel balls a little bit more in action. And he gets first place initially, but then they call it back because he used his steel balls and he disrupted Sandman. And so then Sandman is the winner of first place and Hero is put in 21st. Yeah, which really, really, I don't think uh, Gyro should have been uh, uh, like downscaled 20. uh, No, that's kind of stupid. Yeah. Yeah, because like he he would have no idea that that Sandman was right there because he, Sandman wasn't on the path, and yeah. so really Sandman was like you know kind of cheating and say so, you know, Gyro should have won. Uh, that's all I'm saying. Well, but, there wasn't you know. a set path, but also well there there was <laughs> there was literally a path that had markers on it and everything. I mean it wasn't it wasn't a requirement for you to take that path, but that was the intended path. That's fair. That is fair. Oh yeah, that is fair. Yeah, so it's you know it's it's a little bit of a finish where you're like, I really wanted Hero to win, but then he didn't. So, oh well. And then you had second place came, was Poco Loco in second? Uh, no, Poco Loco was third. So it was Diego, Poco Loco, Mountain Tim, and Johnny. Yeah, I'm trying those to find the, the, uh, the top five. The thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Sandman, Diego, Poco Loco, Mountain Tim, Johnny, and, and then, then the Boom Booms were nine, ten, eleven. Yeah. And then Hero at 21st. Yep. Miss Robinson was on there too, right? Yes, 18. 18. Man, he's slow. Yeah, yeah, so they're in this town, and you get to see Johnny and Gyro kind of talk a little bit. The next stage, so this was actually, so I, I, I had to remember this whenever I read it. So they got here. Like, this first stage was just like its own little, like, they're not going to stop at every stage from here on. This was just the first stretch, you know, ooh, the beginning of the race, exciting. You do it in a day, right? Get down there. We'll rest. We'll, like, restart from this stage tomorrow. Like, that that was the only time that they're going to do this. It was just, like, a first stage kind of special. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd, forgot, the, the... I'd forgotten that they did that. Um, but it was, yeah. So I, I don't want you to think, like, oh, well, they're going to hold everyone at every stage until everyone gets No, it's from, from here on, it's you get to a stage, cool, go on to the next one. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't expecting that, so you know. Yeah, I just wanted. To, I mean, it wouldn't be reasonable. Yeah, just wanted to clear up any potential misconceptions before they appear. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. so the race starts, and Gyro is going off on a little path that isn't the intended path, right? Because it's going to avoid some some little waterfalls, little ponds, or whatever. And Johnny yeah, decides to go with him. Yeah, the waterfalls. I love waterfalls in the middle of my desert. Yeah, yeah, on a it's very true. Piece. And then chasing after them is a certain Miss Robinson. Now, before this, we get to see that at the town before they left, there were some deaths involved, and their their guts were strewn out. And we get to see Stephen Steele sees this, and he's like, "Get my child bride away from this scene." Exactly. <laughs> that's so true. Uh, <laughs> that's that's such a such a weird scenario. He he literally like like because because. Uh, uh, in addition, like chapter, I think it was like eleven point five. Yeah, it was like yeah. Um. Uh, like like he he goes out and he he see his backstory and he goes to some some, I mean essentially from from the perspective of 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 the father, you know, like this this you know fifty something year old man comes to his door. I actually probably would have been like uh, late forties, mid mid to late forties. Comes to comes to your door, right? And he's like. Please, please let me marry your fourteen-year-old daughter. Please, please, She's sir. So please, hot. I will give you <laughs> anything. And then, and then, and then you say yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> it's great. It's I will great. say, I will say, more context is given later. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, would, I, would, I would get hope my so. child bride away from this scene. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so true. And so he puts Mountain Tim on the on the chase to find the murderers. Mountain Tim, yeah. he's a real upstanding guy. I quite like Mountain Tim. Yeah, I like Mountain Tim. I hope I hope he remains as part of part of the uh, the main crusaders. Yeah, or, or so, so, so to say. That's so true. So you get Johnny and Gyro, and they're out in the desert, and you have the Miss Robinson fight. What do you think of this, Trevor? Uh, it was a, it was an interesting fight. It was. Um, uh, as I as I called Miss Robinson's power, um, not harvest. It's so true. Uh, yeah, as you get the uh, little bugs coming from his his eye. Um, yeah. For some reason, I'm not sure how he's alive. He just doesn't. Um, he's like 
reincarnate. Miss Robinson is another special case where it's just like odd, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, it's a fun little fight. You know, it's fun to have the bugs like activating the cactus to like shoot at people. It gets, I mean, it's a fun little fight, but I think it ultimately it's solved pretty easy. It's, you know, it's nice. It's a callback to um, Donovan from part two, which I don't guess you would remember. I don't know if I have I told you this. Um, no, I don't think I don't think. I mean, I think you have told me that, but um, yeah, it's I don't so, I don't think I I saw that part of part two because yeah. you know the people I was supposed to watch it with you know watched all of it without me. That's so true. Um, for no reason, even though we were watching the uh, the dub version of it because I specified I wasn't <laughs> going to watch it unless it was the dub <laughs> version. But whatever. That's so I'm true. St- I'm still mad about that. And I, I can't. I really hope you're watching this <laughs> because I've said this in. to you to your face on one occasion. And I want you to know I'm still mad about it. I'm still mad about it. I'm still mad about it. I'll, I'll come over to your house at some day during the summer. We'll binge part two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Donovan in part two is a fight that's early on against Joseph. He Donovan doesn't use Hamon, so it's like Miss Robinson, you know, also early on doesn't use the main power system, right? Either spin or stands and is defeated uh, with a cactus. That's it, it, it. It's a simple fight. I like it. It's kind oh, of forgettable. Yeah. I got, I, 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 I think I remember. I think I you remember know? part of that. I think I remember. Yeah. 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 Where Joseph leaves him tied to a cactus. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So it, it, it's fun. It's a, it's a nice little fight. Get the funny panel with a uh, gyro with uh, the three holes in his ears. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. all this time you're uh, looking into this, thinking, "Oh, okay, so what you call it? So Miss Robinson was the killer, right?" Then you see Mountain Tim come up, and Miss Robinson wasn't the killer because the hoof prints don't match. Uh oh. And then, why was Miss Robinson after them again? Oh, Miss Robinson just wanted to kill them because of the competition, right? Um, like because no, they I think were... Miss Robinson knew about the bounty. That's true. Yeah, Miss Robinson did know about the bounty. Uh, yeah. I couldn't remember how early that was introduced because I knew it wasn't a factor during the boom boom. It wasn't, right? No, it was a factor in the boom boom. The boom booms were also with the bounty. The boom Did booms they? are the one to yeah yeah. So you learn about the bounty from the boom boom fight. Oh okay. I was yeah. Because I know I know Oyakoma Va was like the big like yeah like I'm gonna kill you because of who you are fight. Uh, I was trying to yeah, remember. Yeah. I feel like the boom that booms w- also wanted to kill them because they wanted to get further like because they were ahead of them in the race. Yeah, yeah, that, that, so yeah. Like, okay, so that that yeah, that's where I was the boom booms. It was it was twofold. They wanted the uh, the fifty uh, the total of the fifty two million dollars. Um, that's true. Yeah, as as well second. as the extra bounty on Gyro's appellate yeah. head. Yeah, that's right. So you know, it, it's a cool little thing to kind of put that beginning of the mystery in of like, ooh, who is Gyro, right? Yeah, he's just you know, like it's like who? Yeah, who is this guy? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and so then. You move on from Miss Robinson into the Boom Boom, Tomb of the Boom. That's the uh, the stand name, Tomb of the Boom. Yeah. What do you think of Tomb of the Boom? Well, no, between Miss Robinson, uh, we ha- well, after Miss Robinson, we get some some gyro lore. Is that really before Tomb of the Boom? Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! I'm looking at it right now. I'm looking at it right That's now. That's so. I man, I I'm I'm out of order. <laughs> yeah, so we've got we've got um you know the the panel the panel of uh of Mountain Tim that that's thirty one of chapter fourteen, um and then and then right next is uh the Desert Born Outlaws um and you start with the um with with Marco. That's true. Yeah. Yep. But right. uh, so so, yeah, so what do you think of all this? That that's all of it, and then. Uh, well, so you just after, learned after, Marco's backstory. Yeah, you, you learned, learned. Okay. learned a little bit about Marco, That's true. and then okay. and then you see you see Gyro working with with Spin. Yeah. Um, not okay. Gyro. Um, uh, uh, Johnny. Johnny working with Spin. He's like trying to spin the yeah. uh, the cork, right? Yeah, yeah, spinning the cork. And yeah. so so then then they're like, whoa, whoa, what's what's this? Who's this? Who's this? This boy, you know? And then then you have the boom booms. Yeah. So, uh, so was, what do you I think of Marco? You do real have quick. a little bit, a little bit. Well, I guess let, let I, let's save the talk on Marco until we get to Gyro's backstory. Yeah, yeah. The rest then, of it. Yeah. So, Tomb of the Boom. Tomb of the Boom. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Um, it was it was interesting. You you first have the uh, you know you've got um, 
Uh, is it Andre? Is he is he the one? Yeah, is it's that Andre season? Boom Boom, L A Boom Boom, and Benjamin Boom Boom. Yeah, you've got Andre. He got bit by uh, by a, a snake. He he tries to cut his fingers off while uh, <laughs> while asphyxiating himself. Kind of so true. That's hot. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> And he's like, I need fire, I need fire. And then he goes to like cut his fingers off. And they're like, Oh, he's serious. This, this like, dude's whoa, legit. whoa, maybe maybe you should help this guy. And then, <laughs> and then they capping, that maybe bro. they shouldn't help this guy. Because yeah. then they, they, they slowly realize that uh um they're they're gonna die now because it's really funny. Gyro touches, I think it's his knife. Uh Gyro yeah, he touches he touches the the, uh, the, the blood, blood on the knife. Stuff. And that turned out to be a pretty bad thing, <laughs> you could say. Yeah. That turned out to be a pretty bad thing. So, Tomb of the Boom uh, with the community is typically viewed as, like, not the best stand fight. And, like, that was my opinion, too. But, like, rereading it, I really enjoyed it. I think I think it's undercut because of some of the stuff that comes later. But I, I really enjoyed it. I think it's a really solid little fight. And then you get the introduction to Johnny's nails, right? And, and his yeah, use yeah, of the yeah. spin. Um, I really, I enjoy how it is. So originally I thought, and I don't know if you, if, what you call it. Originally I thought it was one stand shared with three people, but that's, it, it is three different stands that have three different abilities. I thought it was just one stand shared with three people with three abilities. It is three different stands because they do have different looks. You have Andre, which whenever you touch his blood, it has like you, like you become magnetic. And metal attracts to you. It's Bastet, right? It's it's funny, funny. Uh oh, you touched my outlet. Have gay sex, right? Exactly, exactly. It's my favorite stand. That's why. I so mean, true. Uh, 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 um, uh, um. <laughs> and then you have La Boom Boom, and her stand ability can. I gotta remember this, it because it's Metallica. It's okay. I, I gotta. I gotta remember this exactly. I don't. I don't remember exactly what it does either. But because like uh, LA only uses uh, her stand at like one point in time. Yeah. Okay. So it's so it is a so it is technically like as it's officially described, it is a shared stand. It is one stand shared with the three users. It has three different abilities though. So you have the yeah, the magnetism, and so that so that dispatches gyro steel balls, which is the big deal here, right? Gyro can't spin his steel balls, which is pretty yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he should he should probably invest in like some some wooden balls too. Yeah. It yeah so you hurt. have Andre can magnetize several people at once, and the victims will also attract to each other. Uh, and then it's it's proximity. So the closer they are to the Boom Boom family, the stronger the magnetism is. Then you have so Tomb of the Boom one is Benjamin's. And it can let metal objects sink into his skin to replicate the appearance of another person. And so that, that's Kanoon, right? Which I, I think this is a really interesting twist on a really lame stand from part three. Yeah, yeah. Where it's, you know, like I can I can kind of see how like that would work. And I also think how it's used is pretty genius too, where he transforms himself into Johnny to make Mountain Tim think that Johnny was the murderer while simultaneously making Mountain Tim magnetic. And so him, Johnny, and Gyro would all kill each other. Like, like that. That's really smart. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's genius planning. Like uh-huh. these guys, like actually, like know what they're doing. Like, yeah, it's, like it's not often that we see like cunning from uh, from yeah. some villains. And like really, if it wasn't for Johnny awakening his, his his little spin nails thing, like like they like they would have died. Like the boom booms yeah, had like, a good plan. Up. Like people typically talk about the boom booms like they're dumb. Like we read, I was like, I was like, this is, I was like, this is genius. Like I, I, I mean, you know, LA, LA is dumb, right? But like, in terms of like, how do they use their stand better? I really, I don't know. I mean, like you could say, oh, well, they got careless at the end and that's all they died. But like, I mean, would you expect the cripple to, to have his nails start spinning and cut you? Yeah. Like, like it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And so Tomb of the Boom 2 is Andre's. That's the magnetism. Oh, okay, so Tomb of the Boom 3, L.A. manipulates Iron Sand. Uh, with the sand, L.A. immobilizes his. There's no way L.A. is a guy. 
He is. Yeah, I, thought, I thought I thought it was a guy, but you said her, so I was like, okay, I guess I guess I'll what? Just roll at that. I'm a fake fan. I'm a fake fan. What? Yeah, it, entire... it, they're, what? It's, they're referred they're referred to as brothers. I'm pretty sure. Bro, dude, I'm a fake fan. Maybe, I, uh, dude, I need to. I should reread Steel Ball Run. <laughs> she should do that. Maybe you should. Maybe you should pay attention next time. And I, you, okay. can't, you can't read so, so fast, Brandon. So yeah, so uh, L.A. manipulates iron sand. Additionally, he is able to kill a person by manipulating the iron particles in their blood to to like to suck out their blood. So it is Metallica. But like yeah, not on yeah, the same of like of like it can form razor blades in you. Right? Could it? Maybe, I don't know. But LA is Yeah, dumb. I mean And so like maybe L that's that's the one example of underutilizing the stand. But then that, that's really just a difference in user from LA to Risotto, who Risotto is one of the smartest characters in the series. I, I love Risotto. I love Metallica. Oh yeah, I, do. I, love, that, I love the Riz Master. The Riz Master, that's so true. Yeah. But Tomb of the, I mean, I really enjoyed that. And then you get Mountain yeah, Tim kind of kind of join in the main crew right there because he's, you know, he's like, he's like, I'm sorry, guys. You know, I, I, yeah, I, I got tricked. That was, that's on me. That's my bad. And then, you know, Johnny, Johnny has to save the day. And the, the, the iconic panel of, of him, his hand on the ground and you see the sand spinning. And you're like, OK, now we're getting somewhere. Because yep. uh, he does successfully spin the, uh, the cork before. Like just a little bit, but it does this. Yeah, yeah. At the, at the beginning, at the beginning of the yeah, of the, the, uh, of, the boom. of the boom boom fight. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a fun little fight, and it's also the first like stand battle, right? Because we've, we've seen yeah. Poco Loco stand with his horse. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that but that was just really like it was, still, it was it's a horse race, right? A horse race with a little bit of stand influence, maybe it depends on who you ask. This is like the first stand fight of, of part seven. And on I, I I really enjoyed it on the reread. I was like I was like this was really good. I, I did not remember Tomb of the Boom being that good. And then Yeah, I, I mean it's a it's a it's a decent power right there. Uh -huh. And you also get Johnny's little nails. And so then after Tomb of the Boom, they dispose of them, right? They all die in the desert. Whatever. L L rip those. Yeah. Them. Yeah. They get into the next town. It's a little checkpoint before the next proper uh, the stage is finished and mountain tim is in his room and you see a guy come up is oh come of and he's searching around mountain tim confronts him and then you see little clocks appear on mountain oh, Tim's hand. No, 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 no we get we get don't we get um uh gyro lore before that oh we do yes yeah we yeah, get yeah, we, yeah, we, we get do. gyro yeah, after tomb of the boom before oh come of because oh come of is directly tied into gyro yeah, now right. now we can now we can talk about yeah. about about Marco. About Marco. So you get Marco. Fucking get traitor. <laughs> That's so true. That, that kid <laughs> deserves death. He deserves it. <laughs> he deserves it. How dare you how dare you try your best to make a name for yourself, you little child. How dare you try try to live your best life and put your best foot forward and be be the victim of the most unfortunate circumstance. How dare you? <laughs> I you know, my first time reading through, I was like, really? That's Gyro's motivation? But, like, I almost like how simple it is. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like... I mean, it it shows... It shows... It it paints Gyro as, as you know, the... Um, as the Jonathan-type character. Yeah. Where he's, like, this, this noble character. And you learn from his backstory, right? The Zapelli's developed the spin. And he thought his father was just a doctor. The day he turned 13, finds out his father is an executioner. And they developed the spin, and it can do all sorts of things to the human body. They developed it so they were able to kill people, like, cleaner. Not cause any pain, cause instant death. Right? I just, I think that that's super interesting. To see it that, is. like, it... you know, I think it's more interesting than Hamon's origin, where Hamon was invented to fight the Pillarmen. Where like the spin is a technique used by a family of executioners, and anyone can learn it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it shows it. It shows that. Um, it shows it shows that the uh, the the Sabelli line is is like very compassionate. It's like yeah, like it is our job to kill these people, um, no matter what. But like the the least we could do is give them a pleasant death. Yeah, you know, it's it's the the responsibility put onto us, and like we need to take that responsibility seriously. 
And so I think showing that with not only just the family, then you can see that in Gyro. And so then whenever you see Gyro kind of have to take a step back from that, whenever his first execution is going to be this little boy Marco that, oh my gosh, dude, that <laughs> I, I know what you call it funny. That scene is really sad whenever he's like, he's like, I fixed your thing. If, if you don't like it, I can fix it again. Yeah, I'm just like, yeah. I'm just like, you go, little guy. You go. <laughs> it's... I think that Marco is written very well, very sympathetically. I, 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 mean, I don't know what it is about it. Maybe it's just like he's just like a kid and it's like he obviously doesn't deserve this. You know, I mean, like it sucks. Like I can understand why they're doing it, too. Like, yeah, like, that's yeah. enough. Like I it's... can completely understand why, why they kill this kid. Like, like odds are he probably did hear something. Now, like, he obviously didn't process it, but like, like yeah, I can didn't understand. realize like what it meant because the kid's like five. Yeah, and so it's just like I mean, more than more than likely, he's probably closer to like eight or nine. But yeah. like, well, it's just like that. Like, and then getting to see Gyro, and you know, he kind of uses the spin, and like, he still feels compassion towards people, right? He's, yeah, I mean, there, there's still compassion with the Zapellis, right? His father, like they, like they want to do a clean kill, but it's really out of responsibility. Whereas Gyro yeah. still like looks at people like as people. Like there was there was the one girl with the scene they showed where he was like that this girl was pretty, and like talks to his father and he was like he was like I bet you thought that girl yeah. was pretty didn't you? He said you he need was. to focus like, more. That's so true. He's, he's down bad. He was down bad. <laughs> down bad. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. so true. He was like he's like you need to focus on your duty. He's like he's like this is a, an enormous responsibility we've been we've been that's been put upon us. Like you need to take this seriously. And so like so like I think that's interesting then to like compare that and see like. Okay, so here we have the Zapelli, who's like the Jonathan figure. And I think it also sets, it's very interesting because Gyro has up to this point been a very mentor-like figure to Johnny. And he's been like, you know, like, oh, I'm teaching you, you spin. Like very similar to William in part one, where William is just, you know, this older guy who comes out and he's like, I've been training with this, you know, we're gonna defeat this evil together. I'm gonna train you in Hamon. And Gyro kind of initially comes off as that. You know, he's a little bit he's a little bit funnier, like he keeps the teddy bear and he goes he goes, Yo ho ho, that's he does go like that. Um but yeah, I, I feel does. like his backstory like sets him up to be like like it it gives him more depth than William ever had. You know? Well so, yeah, so you, yeah. I mean he's 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 the protagonist. He better have more depth. That's so true. And so you get to see that Gyro is just as vulnerable as Johnny. Right? Like like, yeah. like yeah, getting to know more about Gyro, I, I I really feel like his backstory did a good job um, on, on setting him up as a character. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, and so like uh, after that, we've got um, now we have um, the, oh, the, guy with the the top the top the the stopwatches. Yeah, Killer Queen Light. The first yeah, time I read yeah. through it like that, that's I was like I was like oh it's Killer Queen Light. What do you think of this? Oh, you come over and. Boko wo rhythm wo kite kure. Otherwise known as Oyakomova. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, I, th I thought it was a, it's a very interesting power. I don't know why his skin does that. Um, I think he should probably get that checked out. Yeah, like um, a dermatologist or something, like a, like a pediatro pediatrician or something. <laughs> a pe yeah, a pediatrician. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I don't think skin is supposed to uh, flake off in like huge chunks like that. Um, but you know, I'm I'm not a doctor. You know, I. That's I, so I, true. You know, you know. That's not Tim's job. He's a doctor. Yeah, that's that's so true. A doctor so and being true. a cool guy. <laughs> the dumbest <laughs> joke I've made all night. <laughs> it's impressive. I've I've made a lot of jump jokes tonight, and that's the dumbest. Yeah, uh, but. I, um, I think it's an uh, interesting power. Yeah, it is. It is. It's um I mean it it's a fairly powerful yeah. um power too cuz you know like uh, on the uh, the the tier list that uh, you Kate and Kyle made like uh, about a year ago now, right? Yeah. Maybe a little yeah. over a year, but yeah. Um you know, you had uh, you had you had your uh, your categories. One one of them was like um if if I touch you, you die. And another one was like, I don't even have to touch you, and you're dead. Okay. Yeah. This is like the exact opposite. It's if you touch me, you're dead. 
Uh huh. I can't remember. Except for where. everyone who touched him, who did yeah. die. So you know, the, so, the the three people in the main cast. Yeah, because Mountain Tim survives using his stand. Olo, oh, lonesome me, which is it's a it's a pretty cool stand. You know, it's it's neat enough. It's not my yeah. favorite from part seven. He can he can like travel himself across rope. It's useful. It's a yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's really it's, it's a, a utility, utility stand. stand. Yeah. It's not a it's not a fighting stand. Uh, and so like it's useful for situations like this where it's like oh I'm gonna blow up. Uh, no I'm not, idiot. <laughs> I'm like, gonna, yeah. I'm gonna oh, extend gonna... myself and like you know minimize it, which is I, I, it's a very smart use of the stand. I, like I would never think to use it like that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so you have Oyakumava. It makes it can produce little stopwatches between two things, and if you let go, they explode. I'd say the main weakness of Oyakumava is one: you have to let go for it to do that. But as we see later, he can put it on the wind. He, well, he put it in his smoke. He put it in his smoke. Yeah. So that yeah. kind of gets rid of that weakness. The other weakness is the explosions themselves aren't terribly powerful. Killer Queen's explosions. I were, mean, I mean, they're small. I mean, they're powerful. They're powerful enough that like um, three explosions were enough to. Um, I mean, for any normal person, it would have killed them. That's fair. That is fair. Just the three explosions. I mean, because you could see, you could see. Um, uh, uh, chapter 21, page like 29. You know, you can see the, uh, you could see Mountain Tim with his bottom jaw like snapped in half. Like, uh -huh. yeah, that would, that would kill a normal person. See, Not yeah. Mountain Tim. Not Mountain Tim, though. Not Mountain Tim. Yeah. So, Oyakamava is like, I can't, I, we probably put it in B tier, I think. I don't, I don't think we gave it A. Yeah, be, I like, mean, I mean, it's it a would, good it would stand. depend. It would depend on how cunning the user was and how yeah. not cunning the uh, the the other the opposing user was. Uh, you know? that, that that's one thing that I think is kind of shown in Tomb of the Boom and in this fight. Johnny's smart. Like he like he figured out Tomb of the Boom's power. He's like he's like oh we're being drawn to each other. He's like yeah he, he's yeah, like yeah. you touch the knife. He's like that bullet. He said it, it, it drop some blood on me. He's like that's probably what it did. He's smart at deducing stand powers. I mean, dude, dude is like, dude's, dude's on the upkeep. It took Dopio a while to figure out Metallica. Now, don't get me wrong; it's completely fair. Metallica's busted. but yeah, I mean, Dopio literally has has Dopey in the name. That's so true. Yeah, so you know, he's he's, he's probably probably not meant to be the uh, the, the smartest character. Mm -hmm. And then, how did how did they defeat Oyakumava again? Um, can you pull uh, it up? I'm trying to remember it was, exactly. I've slept since I read it. I, th I think they uh, they dropped the the bombs like in the water or something, and they blew them up or something like that. I mean, that's I I think that's that's what it was because I remember them running through the wind. The um, yeah, that's exactly what. No, no, it wasn't because they they dropped some bombs and then he's propelled for for forward by those explosions or something. No, 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 no. no. He drops bombs and then uh, gyro and. Um, uh, Jojo, uh, Johnny, Joe are, Kidd. yeah, yeah, exactly, are almost caught, and then he, uh, um, the little bomb, bomb dude, wanna, wanna be, wanna be Kira, uh, yeah. runs up the waterfall, and then they, they, they follow, um, and with the, with the wasps, and then, uh, like all the wasps have bombs on them, and then, um, uh, the 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 spin like grabs the net and like pulls all of the the wasps away, and then um, uh, you then then you have the smoke with the bombs, and then it's like oh hey you remember the uh, you remember the um for the the spider webs yeah it's actually got fingernails on it now, and yeah that's that's, that's how he so dies true. with the fingernails. Yeah, so... And the fingernails and the steel ball. The steel ball hits him in the face because he was distracted by the fingernails. That does help. Yeah. The wasps... They Dude, that would hurt, though. Web. That would hurt, though. Like, so he sent, the, he sent the wasps... Well, he put the... He put the bombs in the smoke. He turned them into mines. Yeah. In a cigarette smoke because it had his DNA on it. Uh-huh. You could blow me back with the same wasp I turned into mine. So he turned the wasp into. I'm trying to remember, the the way he uses his power is kind of kind of odd. With the way yeah, he's playing. 
So, so yeah. So Johnny shoots. I, I couldn't. I needed. I needed to confirm that Johnny shot his nails here. I didn't. I didn't want to drop that. That, that, that had a thing here. And so, so Johnny can shoot his nails with the power of the spin. Yeah. And so it's able to. Yeah. So it, and then it acts as a. I thought this was really cool the way it was used. It acts as like a propellant for the steel ball. It like extends its range. It's like that's really cool. And like, because like you know, the spin yeah, yeah. like feeds off of it, uh, off of off of itself. I was like, I was dude, like, it's just it. like it's just like it's just like Beyblades, dude. With you dude, get the reverse just spins, like dude. You got like Pegasus and uh, Ligma, and oh, I can't remember any others. It's my favorite. <laughs> it's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then so after this, you actually had the rest of uh, Gyro's backstory. Yeah, yeah, the uh, the inter intermission interlude piece, chapter twenty four, um, and we get to we get to see um, we get to see that he's from the the kingdom of Naples, which is that's actually that's actually a, uh, a JoJo reference, actually, right there. Yeah, you got Naples like uh, in uh, in part five when they go to Naples. That is so true. And so yeah, yeah. so they're going five, to find. Dude, I was I was like, whoa, like dude, like JoJo's. I was not I was not expecting to see that, and then it then it was there. Yeah. So this is where so he was cool. talking about sentimentality with Gyro, which with the uh, with the pretty lady uses shield ball to um, what you call it? Do that. So Gyro can't have sentimentality because it gets in the way of the executioner. Yeah, she's right? pretty hot though. That is I, true. I, I I could fix her. I could fix her. I could fix her. And so then you get Gyro and Marco meeting where Marco fixes his thing, and they find the zombie horse, which is a string that heals you. Right, and then yeah. so you have, so Gyro is healing himself with it, and you have zombie horse can heal wounds. They left the string here so I can sew with it. The string can heal up to a certain degree, at least to the point of fixing flesh that had been broke off. Um, is this a technique? No, it doesn't seem like a technique. Does it? It's, neither does your steel ball. Does something bigger, something like a stand ability? Gyro goes, no. This is just is a gift from the king. Just as the letter side beside my old man, he never writes letters. And so then that's the end. That, that's where we read up to. So Zombie Horse yeah. is, I don't, I think they'll explain it more later. It's not a stand. Yeah, well, it can't be a stand because stands are only found in the in the, the cursed part of the, the land where the asteroid hit instead of in the like the poles or like that's whatever true. happened in like the That's right. No, I, f I forgot that. I yeah. forgot that they explained that. Yeah, so stands in this part are given a little bit different. We can talk about this real quick. I, I forgot that they said that. They did They did explain that. So you have the Devil's Palm. I forgot that this was explained during Tomb of the Boom. Yeah. So if you go through the Devil's Palm and you have the aptitude, you get a stand. So it's different. It's not, not stand arrows, not what you call it like that. It, it is different in here. And there are other ways to get stands that we will see later. Um, some maybe sooner than later. But the Devil's Palm is like the main way. You walk through Devil's Palm, you get a stand. Right. Yeah. So easy enough. But yeah. So that was the first twenty-four chapters of Steel Ball Run. I quite like them. I th I think it's a good little intro. These were all the chapters pu published in a uh, weekly Shonen Jump. Uh, where, where? What are your thoughts to uh, to wrap this up, Trevor? Well, I mean, I'm glad we're finally wrapping this up because uh, now it means we can we can uh, we can read more. <laughs> That's true. Because you know, I I I finished. I finished, um, uh, you know, like, um, like 21 through 24, like two weeks ago. Yeah. And yeah we yeah. just like never had a time where, where we could record it, but uh -huh. you know, we finally got a time where we could record it. Yeah. So, so yeah. it worked out well. And then now that this isn't going to be a secret from Kyle and Cade, <laughs> we don't have to wait for a time where they aren't on. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah. So we will be back, uh, whenever we get back to it with the next set of chapters, which I'm going to determine once we finish this recording, because I'll see kind of what we have, where we're going to go, how much I want to break this up. Uh, we won't be reading 24 chapters again because the chapters are going to get to be about twice as long. Uh, so I'll just, I'll see, I'll see the arcs, that kind of stuff. So yeah. if you're this far in the video, obviously there's something you like. So make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment uh, telling us uh, which side of the Hey Ya debate you're on. You think it's uh, the standability luck or you think it just encourages you. And we will see you next time in whatever video comes out next. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.